And joining me, Democratic Congresswoman from California, Karen Bash. She is a member of the Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, how do you feel about needing to hear directly from Robert Mueller? Oh, I think it would be very important to hear directly from him. I mean, our first step is to get his full report, but I would not be surprised down the line at all if, if we get every single page, which we all know is doubtful, that uh, we wouldn't want to hear from him as well. What would be sufficient in your eyes uh, in terms of what you get out of the report? <clears throat> Well, well, what would be sufficient would be all, apparently it's 400 pages, all the underlying evidence and all of the information so that we can look at the issues, whether we are talking about collusion or obstruction of justice. Why did he come to the decision that there wasn't enough evidence uh, to move, you know, to move forward? Why didn't he say that whether the president was indicted or an unindicted, you know, whether the indictment was sealed? Why, you know, why did he come to the conclusions that he did? So uh, that's why it's very important that we receive everything, the full report and the underlying evidence. Will you accept any re redactions whatsoever? Well, I'm sure that there would be some redactions, so it would be hard for me to say we wouldn't accept any. But here's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about 10 pages of full, you know, redactions. So, you know, I understand that some things have to be redacted, but if you're going to send us 400 pages and 300 pages are redacted, that's going to be completely unacceptable. Here's how the Wall Street Journal is... is uh... Uh, talking about this today. Their editorial board, they're pushing back on Democrats, saying the uh -huh. AG surely understood on releasing the summary of conclusions last week that he would be open to contradiction by Mr. Mueller if he took such liberties. Mr. Barr also knew he'd be called to testify before Congress once the rest of the report is released. There's a lot of talk from Democrats that, that they just don't trust William Barr because he is a political right. appointee from the, of the president's and because he wrote that, that memo talking about what he believed to be presidential authority. Um, what do you think of the, the prospect of, of A.G. Barr being in, in such direct conflict with Mueller? Do you think the chances are, are high of that? Oh, I absolutely think they're high. I mean, really and truly, the 19-page memo he wrote was unsolicited. And so you know that that was interpreted by many, including myself, that he was auditioning for a job. We knew Sessions was going to be fired. And so if he wanted to be in line for the job, we know that the way to deal with the president is to, you know, usher praise on him and to talk about how there's no collusion, no conspiracy. He did that in an 18-page in an memo or 19-page page memo saying that a sitting president couldn't be indicted. And then when he went through his confirmation process, you remember that many people didn't feel he should be confirmed, and if confirmed, at a minimum he should recuse himself. He did none of that. So it's very hard to take him uh, seriously, which is why we have to see the entire report. We need him to come before the ju Judiciary Committee. I know Chairman Nadler is going to have him come before the committee. He needs to explain himself. Um, I want to ask you about uh, another subject. The House sure. has reauthorized the Violence Against Women Act uh, yes. that earlier today. The vote total was not as bipartisan as it usually is. Why is that? Well, I think that it's unfortunate. I think that many of my Republican colleagues were scared away from voting for the Violence Against Women Act because of the threats from the NRA. You know, the National Rifle Association wanted uh, people who had been either victims or perpetrators of abuse to have access to guns. That's something that, you know, is completely ludicrous. And so I know that that was one reason. I also think that some of my colleagues were not uh, happy with the protections and the expansion expansion of the Violence Against Women Act to include uh, the LGBT and trans community. So those might be some of the reasons why they chose not to vote for it. Now one thing that I want to do is, and I haven't seen it yet, I haven't looked at the vote, but you know out of 199 Republicans there's only 14 that are women. Mm -hmm. And so the question is how did the Republican women vote? Mm -hmm. And also the co-sponsor, it was my legislation, the co-sponsor of the legislation was a man. So even out of the 14 women they couldn't have have one of them step up to be the lead co-sponsor of the legislation, it was a pretty sad moment, I have to say. Uh, and just one final question. The death of, raps, of the rapper Nipsey Hussle, yeah. he did a lot of advocacy work in your district. Do you want to say anything about that? 
Yeah, I just think that was such a tragedy. I mean, not just in my district, but in the neighborhood where I actually live in. And I will tell you that the grief, the outpouring of grief, you know, he had turned his life around and made really significant uh, contributions to the community, starting businesses, hiring people. He was a developer, you know, getting ready to embark on a major project. So he definitely has a stamp on the South LA area in a very positive way. So I think it was such a tragedy, uh, his loss. California Congresswoman Karen Bass. Karen, or Congresswoman, thank you very much. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Appreciate it.